Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Sub Podcast 115 is about to start. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney, across from me in the virtual uh, studio, I guess. Uh, we have Lawrence Deloach, the Kombucha King, and then the ABG Hunter, uh, Luke Trevisi, also in the building. I'm going to get you. <laughs> here we are, guys. Uh, today is... Because uh, this day should be really uh, noted. It's uh, May 31st, Sunday, 2020, uh, amongst this quarantined time, um, uh, while also this rioting time. There have been a number of protests that have gotten, uh, I think what we could say is out of hand, and caused some of our favorite places to be broken into and looted um for what isn't even really uh the companies in some cases some of our stuff um so we're in a very uh i hate to say trying time i I don't know i've i've just so many buzzwords have been used about what kind of situation that we're in but it's unprecedented for uh you know needless to say and how do you guys feel about what's going on uh, it's sad. It's very sad that it has to even get to this point. You know, that's like ultimately yeah. how I feel about it. Like it, this shouldn't be happening. Like none of this should be happening. Like this is yeah, all very all easily avoidable stuff. I'm glad people are speaking out about it. I'm glad that there's action being taken. But yeah, at some points, it's it's it it becomes very hard to like watch what's going on. You know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to watch uh, African-American men uh, consistently be uh, treated like they're subhuman. It's, mm-hmm. it's hard to watch uh, an eight minute and 46 second, close to nine minute video of a man have a police officer put his knee in his neck uh, where he can't breathe and he's screaming out for his mother. It's, um, it's hard to to see um, black people across the country. And, you know, you can name names, Breonna Taylor, uh, Trayvon Martin, Amu Diallo. It's it's hard to see that um, at the hands of police officers. So when you have all of that, and if there wasn't a video of this gentleman, if there wasn't a video of what we saw, then the cops would have swept it under the rug, yep. um, like they've done so many times. Yeah. And we've, for the last 30 years, uh, since, you know, I mean, obviously uh, Rodney King is probably one of the first major ones that we saw on tape of a black man uh, being assaulted by police officers. and. And the cops still were able to uh, be free after this injustice. And you saw uh, the Los Angeles riots in in 1992, where people were just fed up. And um, and we could flash forward to 2020, and people are are fed up. But this time, it's not just L.A. It's Minnesota. It's um, It's Atlanta. New York City, LA, all over the place. There's there's numerous cities um, that people have just come together because they're they're tired of it, and and it brings up yeah yeah you do you sit there and you you do watch these these uh, billion dollar companies uh, have their stores looted and you know we we orig- the first store I believe we saw on camera was Target, mm-hmm. but um. You know, I don't feel it's not, you know, I I don't feel that it's, that it's something that um, people are saying, well, these people are, you know, taking advantage of situations. Police officers have taken advantage of situation for years. And I think people are just upset. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I, do I think that, you know, do I think booting a, a sneaker store, which we'll, we'll, we'll get into in a little bit is, do I think that's, uh, do I think that's right? I mean, who's to say what's right and wrong at this point in, in this world? I mean, 
sneakers can be replaced. You know, the things that were stolen out of these stores, you know, granted, not everyone had the greatest intentions at all. I mean, not, you know, they didn't, but you know, that stuff could be bought back. Property damage, you know, insurance that covers it. But when a black man, uh, his life was snuffed out and and that, that'll never come back. So when I see this, I'm like, if this is the method that people want to get across to police, to the government, to to everyone, this to say, hey, this should not happen, then fuck it, burn it to the ground. It's such a crazy. Uh, there's just so many angles. I guess is part of the problem, right? Because being white. Right. That's pretty obvious. Um, I would like to go support. I would like to be a part of these, some of these protests, but um, sometimes uh, things that I maybe do to support a cause can be turned around and flip and be blamed on um, a black stereotype, which is a part of this looting situation. Um, it's, it's weird because the only way to get some people's attention is to fuck with their money, which I think was the cause of things like that initial target. Um, protests where people will get ignored until people's bank accounts get disrupted because that's what they really care about. So if I participate in that loot, looting though, or any white person or any other minority loop, Asians, wh whatever, Italians, um, any type of person, it can get it flipped and then it could be part of a black stereotype. So it's just interesting to see uh, what people have chosen to do and what side they really stand on. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know how you guys necessarily feel about it, but I think I feel like we speak for everybody that's even guests that's been on the podcast where we say we want justice for George Floyd and for uh, African Americans in this country. And I mean, it's, it's hard to start this on such a heavy note, but I think it's good to say uh, where we stand. And um, I mean, going into the looting even further, more relevant to the podcast, uh, I think was Flight Club the real first one that kind of caught the attention? I think that was the first the people in LA, one. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I mean, you got to realize there's been people have been looting Louis Vuitton, um, mm -hmm. you know, all, like a lot of these, you know, stores. Um, round two in Virginia and round two in LA were, uh, were hit. Yep. Uh, Flight Club obviously is the most uh known or you know most well publicized uh sneaker shop that was looted also um, the most sort of uh corporate as far as a reselling uh entity uh -huh. the, yeah. the nike stores and other things you know those are billion dollar businesses uh but it's with flight club that not only was the business hurt but the customers and being the sellers also yeah. Um, Lawrence, you pointed out to us in our, in our group chat outside of the, you know, the recording is that they take StockX and all these other companies, they take no responsibility for any of the things that are lost, distributed, or destroyed. Yeah. So not only are we in a time where some people can't even pay their bills, in an effort to pay their bills, they try to sell their sneakers, which they care about so much, for then them to get stolen and damaged. Um, and I think this also goes into what Virgil said. Uh, in a statement on his Instagram story where he was saying streetwear is dead because it was a community that no longer exists. Um, you guys want me to kind of pull it up to here? Let me yeah, go pull, it sure, you can pull it up. Yeah, I got it. Um, Cause this is also something that we've speculated in general of what he meant by this. I think right. not only does the unfortunate timing of the situation uh, help him elaborate, but also, I mean, he has further examples of this where, uh, here, let me just read this first paragraph here, um, or a couple. Number eight, here, why I said streetwear is dead. Streetwear is a community. It's groups of friends that I've had a common bond. We hang out on the street corners, fight with each other, fight for each other. Streetwear is a detachment to the above. Streetwear is yelling and shop staff starting fights in, in lineups, uh, defaming us because we didn't get enough pairs of our shoes because everyone can't get a pair. Streetwear is a group of friends that I'm surely was like, come on guys, this is Sean's store. We can't treat him like this. We know Sean. 
Uh, maybe Sean, in this example, being Wotherspoon. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does make a good point. The, the culture here, uh, which has been seen by uh, especially what was taken from these stores, is no longer there. It is a, just a product of, I guess, this hype, right? Is that a good way to put it? Yeah, but if you look back, you see, this is my issue with this, is that if you look back at the history of reselling, one of the first places to start, like to really mainstream, like to make reselling like a mainstream thing was Fight, Flight Club. Yeah. And it, it was taking advantage of uh, a cultural phenomenon started in the black community that, you know, uh, that has become more about dollars than, you know, uh, the shoes. You know, when, we, when I was a kid shopping for like the sneaker community was sneakerheads.com on a forum and you'd be like i'm looking for these shoes and then somebody would pop up and they give you a pretty decent deal on them because they're just nerds who like sneakers and it's kind of it's gone very far away from that yeah you know yeah it's um yeah flight club and you know and and, and i've been uh i've resold sneakers since i'm gonna say 2000 and and Four, 2003 2004 and we're looking at you know and the first I, like you said Luke the first place that I remember I mean I used to I used to sell on um, Nike talk I've sold on in soul style shoes uh, soul collectors I mean, yeah, I've sold dude. I've sold on uh, a lot of, I think in style shoes I'm not sure if they had a form I used to I sold on a lot of different platforms and I just remember Fight Club being the the first place that I, I took my, my sneakers to when they were on Green a Green Street or Green Avenue or whatever. I think it's Green Street. Mm -hmm. And um, this is around 2004, 2005. And, um, you know, I've, I've always, I've had my, uh, my in, indifference. I've had my moments in Flight Club, especially in the early days where I, I, I literally was going to fight the employees. Like I, I did not, there was one Spanish dude I, I'll never forget for, for a long time, we would just like not like each other. And as things, as years progressed, you know, we, we definitely, we got a lot cooler. Like, you know, like he's, you see someone's face for, you know, five, seven to 10 years, you know, you're going to, you know, eventually just be like, what's good. You're going to chop it up with them. But, you know, I, I always used to say that flight club wasn't the best thing for streetwear if that makes sense. And I'm not going to pinpoint and just make a point and, and put the blame on flight club, but there's somewhere along the line when flight club monetized sneakers so much that it, it did kind of like streetwear and, and sneakers definitely became less of a, a hobby and more of a fuck you. I'll do whatever it takes to make an extra $20. Right. Yeah. Because you got, you get not even like, not even like people who are big fans of sneakers. You've seen it in the comedy community. I'm not gonna name names, but we know they exist. People who we've seen in comedy clubs who don't, we'll, we'll wear whatever shoes, we could wear, you know, Fear of Gods, Off-Whites, anything, and they won't bat an eye, but they'll be online selling shoes, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's like, and that's because you have stores like Flight Club where it's like, I've, I can see a physical dollar amount on this shoe. This is a legitimate retailer selling these shoes for this much money. Mm -hmm. and, and it's that... it's well just to play off what you're saying sure. luke and it's, it's sort of a you know that look what i can get for this this dollar amount is what's caused people like this guy so this was uh yeah a dude posting what he stole from flight club to like brag mm -hmm. so yeah he got some mags which uh the price tag generally on those is like twenty thousand dollars ish i mean but look at this shit yeah this is bananas yeah yeah, this is, uh, it's, uh, you know, there, there's so many different uh, feelings behind it because, you know, if you know the culture of Flight Club, Flight Club doesn't own any of those, like everything yeah. is consignment, you know? Yeah. So, there's, so there's people that, you know, drop those sneakers off, but because Flight Club is such a, uh, they're such a respected uh, known entity in the world that, you know, like, fuck it. Like I drop, I'm people dropping off, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sneakers. there, not, 
And, you know, this is something that, you know, is, is Fico has been in business for almost two decades. You know, this has never happened. You know, I've, I've dropped off sneakers for, you know, for $3,000, $4,000 in there and just been like, all right, you know, like you just, you know, it's like, it's Fight Club. You know, yeah. they're going to, the shit, you know, who you trust. So now I feel like, um, you know, this is going to be very interesting and tricky, especially with them yeah. in terms of how things will shake out in terms of, you know, people that obviously that are, you know, putting these high priced items in there for, for it to walk out as we saw, I sent you guys something today that was like about round two in New York city. They, you know, their Virginia store has been looted. Mm -hmm. The LA store has been looted, but you know, in New York, they took all this shit out now. Yeah. So it's like if, if New York, which, you know, it's, I'm very shocked that a lot of these stores haven't been looted. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing in there for you. So it's like, all right, we'll have property damage, but you know, it's. Yeah. It's, um, Damn, it's just, this is such a heavy topic for us. It's like, I mean, we know where we stand. Mm -hmm. I think the listeners know if they followed us for a long time. Um, it's, it's hard to argue against the looting, though, also. I mean, going back to what I was saying, it's like, how often and how, quant how do I even phrase this? I mean, we've all said and protested it like so many different times. We've been peaceful. Like, like, even us, we follow the rules right now. We're staying home during this quarantine, right? It's like we're, everyone's trying to do their own thing in their own way. Uh, and like I say, going back to the money thing, it's you have to fuck with people's money in order to get attention. So in that instance, I'm, like, kind of down for looting. But when it comes to this stuff, it's like, but where's the line? Like, how do you guys even really define – you get what I'm saying? Well, I think, I think you got to really look at it like this. I mean, there's been so many protests for so many different things, whether – you know, it was, you know, I, I can't breathe with Eric Garner. It was, you know, the Skittles and, and with Trayvon Martin, you know, Mike Brown. There's always been people have protested, you know, the, the people have yeah. marched. This is the first time in a long time that I can remember where it's like, I mean, people are setting cop cars on fire, mm -hmm. you know, destroying police stations. And it's almost you know, the public outcry on this was so heavy that it forced uh, the FBI and to get involved with this case where they had to make some type of, you know, arrest or some type of, you know, they had to do something with this uh, police officer. So, um, you know, if it, I always, like I said, if it, you know, um, to me, America has been built on looting, rioting, stealing doing whatever it, it took yeah which is not you're not wrong no, i mean you know i mean you know this country was you know built on slaves you know slaves built this country and if we, yep. you know if you really want to get deep about it so i feel um so this is not this is not anything that i'm really like batting and I, I mean i once again i mean these if you're talking about Target and Walmart and fucking Louis Vuitton, like they, they have insurance. They have. Yeah. Hit them up. They'll be, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that's the, the answer, but what I'm saying is that I think people are just like, you know, I mean, like I said, I've never seen a, a riot where po police cars are being burnt down in, in numbers. Like yeah. we're like, people are literally like a cop gets out of his car and then a minute later, his car is like on fire. Yeah. And it's, it's so interesting because this it, – it's literally not new. We have historic evidence, not into this stuff that even you're saying, Lawrence, which we've all, we all know about all the, the recent deaths in the years, but there's not a fuck the fire department song. You know what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's, a, there's been a fuck the police song that has been over and over and over played for the past, like, 30 years. Do the right thing. This is exactly what happened to it. That's what I'm mm -hmm. saying, yeah. Yeah. This is not all, it's just, it's befuddling. But there, I mean, just to kind of bring this to a lighter side of things, because we could, we could stay in this depressing topic, the whole thing. There are some cool things that are coming out of it. Um, with one thing, uh, Nike's new campaign, the don't do it, that's cool. And then for Adidas to hop on and say like, yeah, we're, we're with this. So now there's not only our two sort of haloed companies that we all sort of look to, they're coming together and at least they're doing the right thing socially. 
Mm-hmm. Which who the yeah. thought it, it would take another black guy dying for Nike and Adidas to team up? It's an, it's an unfortunate instance that has to be the thing, but it is, I think it is going to lead somewhere for down the road a positive light amongst all this stuff. I mean, is there any other positive things that you guys have seen? Nope. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right? Man. Nah. I, people coming together. I think that's like that's like really yeah. honestly the the positive to me. But um, it's yeah. not much positive going. You know. It, it no, is. It is pretty beautiful to see all of like these people in New York. Like when you go out and like you see all these people protesting this one thing. There's all different creeds, colors, religions in that mix. You know. Uh, obviously the, uh, the biggest purveyor is the black community because you got to stand up for, for your own, but like everybody standing up as like a community, uh, during this time, it's very nice to see, I will say, as far as that goes, there is a, a level of community that I think New York and all these major cities are feeling right now because they need to, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, I mean, and also to keep it on the lighter side, like uh, for those who did loot, uh, congratulations on your new pickups. Very happy for you, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't they know why you looted. Yeah, I don't know why you looted three fifties or seven fifties, but that's fine. Bro, uh, listen, I think people was just trying to get whatever the fuck they could in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, get out. Yeah. Some I mean, of those people in these videos, bro, they had no idea what they were doing. They just saw the shit. They were so. like running in there. I saw a pair of Soulfly ones on the floor, like like the the Soulfly joints, and I was yeah. like, you, "Wait a second, you know how much those are going?" They just they just dropped whatever, you know what <laughs> I mean? They don't it. care. It was taking. I saw a dude. It was so funny. Dude came out with like four boxes, right? And a motherfucker snatched one of the boxes from him. So like it was like he jingled <laughs> his shit. Like it was like dudes was just looting the looters, you know what I mean? So we're. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting. It's great, man. It's uh, it's really like I said. I, I they would like the dude got the Air Max. I really didn't. You know, I ain't. Really well, he said hard work in the video, which made me pissed. Like pissed me off because I was like, it's not hard work to steal. Like you got you were you were lucky. You know. I mean, <laughs> my utmost respect to this photo I saw of this of this white guy in the Target. He had a mask on. He was very he looked very timid, and he was just holding this giant Lego set. Oh like yeah, the three hundred and fifty dollar Lego type shit. Like it's the whole Death Star shit. Him just walking quietly in between everybody holding his Legos. I was like, all right, my man got what he wanted at least out of that shit. There you go. I saw a video of the lady. Uh, she was uh, looting the cheesecake. You know what I mean? And then she was holding <laughs> the cheesecake. Like that bitch. Was oh, the waiter. whole cheesecake. She was holding the whole cheesecake. Yes, like, I saw waitress. that one. Dude, I mean, some of these, some of these are just straight up like hilarious with that it's like it's you know it's oh, fuck. i saw the people in atlanta that fucking stopped everybody from attacking the waffle house yes yes that I was pretty that. fun <laughs> i didn't see that everybody was like not the waffle house please <laughs> not the waffle house <laughs> or, you know, nah but you know it's this uh, is what, this is what i'm now this is what I'm talking about. Now, for the listeners out there, obviously, uh, you hear, you know, Atlanta, New York, I mean, L.A. Uh, it seems like New York City has been very, uh, in terms of rioting, not many places. I did see uh, the North Face, I believe, uh, in, in Soho and Manhattan. They were looted. But uh, I think people in New York haven't really rioted yet. And I think that's because we got cops who are out there ready to shoot. You know, Yeah, I mean? our I, cops are fucking crazy people, man. They are ready to fight. Like, mm-hmm. that's what they want to do. Our cops will arrest you from looting, beat the shit out of you, and then take the shit you looted and bring it home. And bring it home. Yeah, they we will. Got some yeah. really crooked cops and shit out here. You know? oh, There's going to be just videos of some sneakerhead getting beat up with the mask on the next day. The fucking guy's wearing the mags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, so we... Now, I just wonder, like, you know, in terms of, like, these stores, like, you know, these bigger stores, like Flight Club, Stadium Goods in New York City, the fact that they've seen what's been happening across the country and, uh, you know, even Flight Club LA, and uh, are they trying to, like, we saw round two move their stock out. Do you think uh, Stadium Goods and, and Flight Club are doing similar, or do you think it's just too late now? I think that any move that can be made, is going to be made within the capacity of what they can do. Uh, I don't know how people, 
I, well, all right, here, this is what I say. I don't know what the mindset of the protesters are about COVID. I don't know if business owners are still looking at as a potential threat. Like maybe they just don't want it. I don't know. People are acting like COVID's like non-existent right now. But as far as the business owners, I guess it depends on what they are worried about and how much they have in the shops. Mm -hmm. right. If they got enough money to go, going back to this other thing, if you depends on fucking with the money, if they have enough money in there where it's really going to fuck their shit up. I'm sure they're going to go get their stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If not, maybe they're just going like, I'll stay home. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if stadium goods tried to move some of the more expensive pairs that they have somewhere else you know yeah mm -hmm. also fresco a big dude he'll fuck some people up i mean he'll yeah <laughs> it's true he's mm -hmm. fucking huge and he's all sorts of ripped and jack he'll fuck a dude up for sure well, i mean you know like i said i mean but you know you, you get to a certain point where it's just like you know hey you know uh insurance will unfold you know we can rebuild we're not going to risk someone's life no one's out there no, risking for sure. your life for you know for some shoes so um but yeah i think you know like i said it all the at the end of the day i mean these stores wouldn't be getting looted if you know police officers weren't out here killing uh black men unarmed and just black, black people unarmed you know whether yeah. you know, yeah. black people in general you know like not just men but black women they you know they, they're killing them and i think you know if if this wasn't happening we, we would just be it'd be another regular sunday COVID Sunday talking about we would just start off with chunky donkeys and talking about how fucked up the game is but instead yeah. we got to start off with some with this because of what the police officers are doing in right. the community so speaking of chunky donkey mm -hmm. did anybody hit does anyone know anyone that hit because I don't even know I have no friends of friends of friends that hit anything mm -hmm. nobody that I know hit that's, no. it, that's crazy usually I know one person that got it it's Even usually, if it's in my extended familia. It's usually my friend Chris on on the Discord. He's usually yeah, the guy. Chris is a human robot. Human bot. <laughs> they are right now, um, at least in my size, a seventeen hundred. Um, other sizes being not a nine and a half. Lower sizes being higher for the most part, but then you get up to like, you know, fourteens, thirteens, around two grand. I mean, yeah, this one really fucked it up, dude. And every fit I saw people wearing them, and it was trash. Yeah. You know, it's uh, we, we've discussed this on this podcast plenty of times. I think this is the uh, the shoe that, I mean, you got to think we'll, we'll kind of break the SB bubble. I mean, we're talking a shoe out of the gate that's 16 times the retail price. Yeah on the resale market and um you you just you know after a while like people were just like the fuck man you know it's it was one of those releases that you laughed at but at the same time if you really wanted to shoot it was very uh it's very frustrating yeah, yeah. the friends and family at least is down last sale was three thousand when i think last week we looked at it it was upward of four thousand granted it wasn't out yet but at mm -hmm. least there's some sort of uh, balance happening where it's just, yeah the packaging wasn't enough to keep it that high mm -hmm. um yeah and i don't know yeah this has to have popped the bubble i guess because i can't see this is one of those ones where it's just so extreme on every level like not only with like the compelling story with the packaging the flip on the name like every everything that was done right but then just the hype was too much the price got over hyped and I can't imagine like a regular SB going for this much anymore. You know what I mean? Well, I think I think when what when you say a regular, I mean you gotta look. We're talking these shoes are are more than you know SBs that's fifteen years old. And I, you know I get it. These are 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 hype sneakers, but I mean for them to be out the gate this type, you know, and the only other. SB that had some that I can recall in my like immediate memory that had this type of height was the Tiffany Lowe's. Mm -hmm. Tiffany Lowe's in 2005. If there was social media, if there was like an Instagram or a Twitter, I think those would those would have had similar um, height 
I just I remember how insane it was for those. You know that that was yeah. the SB that made people. Yeah. You know there was like five hundred people outside of the, a skate shop for ten pairs. You know. Mm-hmm. To just even to speak about the importance of that shoe in regards to the lore of this podcast, I think it was like episode two or three or something. We talked about the Tiffany Dunks for I think at least twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. You know what I mean? That was like half an episode Mm -hmm. in the first fucking. We were in single digits talking about those before Red October's, any of that shit. I remember being outside of sneakers as a kid and seeing a kid um, riding around in his in Tiffany Lowe's. And at the time, I just knew those were just really nice shoes, you know? Like, mm-hmm. you can just see them on the silhouette. They're just a nice, nice shoe, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I nice mean, shoes. you know, I, like I said, I always I always just remember um, wanting – I remember being in college, and I was going back to my college, I think, like, a week after they dropped. And I remember uh, I was so upset because I was like, I would have been out there trying to get them. And I and and you know I was still in New York, and a guy on Nike Talk had him, and he he uh, he said I asked him how much for the twelve, and he said I think two twenty, yeah. and I was like, bruh, two twenty? Who the fuck is paying two twenty? Right? I said that's so. <laughs> I said that's insane, man. That's two twenty, man. But I remember I wanted them so bad, I paid two twenty for them, and um, here we and, are. And at that point, that was a lot of money for a pair of SBs. That was a lot of money for. You know, unless it was Jordan or a phone positive, phone positives weren't even weren't even really out in 2005. Like they were they weren't retro yet at that point. But Jordans. Yeah. Uh, Air Force Ones. Yeah. But fucking SB Dunks like that was, you know, for a seventy dollar shoe to be two hundred inches. Like you just looked at it and you're like, I'm paying resale off the rip. Yeah. Yeah. But so. Uh, I mean, look, if, if the bubbles popped, like, Lawrence, I'm not um, going to disagree with you there. I think there might be, like, a couple releases that I'll trickle through because it it's, like, enough hype boxes. Like, if Virgil does a dunk, if Fuji gets a dunk, or if Futura gets a dunk. Some of these people, if they get a dunk, it'll be just as hype. But, I mean, where do you think we're moved here? Like, I tried to uh, say that trail running, I think, was going to be a big thing coming up. Um it's not spiking like I thought, but then again, we're in a weird time, so it, things aren't moving normally. But I mean, it's like, where do you guys think it's going to go from here? Combat boots. <laughs> Military grade boots. Military grade combat boots for um, the people. I think we get back to, I mean, I feel like we get back to like Air Force One, something basic. You know, they figure out the right celebrities to. To really market the air, I mean, Air Force Ones never go away, but like, you know, obviously the hype on most of them, you know, isn't. Yeah. But, well, you um, think because we just kind of had a little Air Force One spike with the Supreme that you know they had that little basic kit or whatever the Travis ones. The, I mean, we just had a bunch of forces. You think they were going to reach out and visit that? I don't. I don't really know if that's going to go there, but I'm not I mean, saying you're wrong. No, no, no. I get what you're saying. I mean, where where mm. the remember? I feel like we've had. Air Jordan ones were, you know, for maybe three or four years, you know, just, I mean, they still, they still bring, you know, they still bring out a lot of people, but those, you know, a few years ago, I mean, those people were fucking going crazy for them. Uh, same with, with dunks now, whether it's lows, you know, SBs, people, I mean, people tend to gravitate towards the classic, you know, uh, silhouettes. Now I'm not yeah. saying trail running, but I think, you know, we get to that Air Force One. I could see Roshi's making a comeback at this point. Maybe. Roshi's might some basics. Like, I don't know. New basics? Yeah. Like nah, what? I can't. I mean, I can't really see Roshi. I mean, because Nike keeps pushing the technology forward. Mm-hmm. So, now, yeah. so now instead of Roshi's, you got React. Yeah, React's True. kind of the one now. Unless they do like a weird Roshi. Because they like to do that. Once it gets kind of stale, they're like, hey, we'll trick them. We'll. <laughs> Kind of put them together and they'll we'll put them together. Yeah. Uh, so you might get some Roshi reacts, maybe. I could see something like that. We'll put the Nike Air and things. the Jordan on the back of the shoe. <laughs> Genius. Mm. But I mean, I, aren't the set the sevens came out when Jordan sevens was that ninety? Well, Am the, I about to sound the, stupid the, the if year. I think about this? No, you're not. It's nineteen ninety two. Yeah, ninety two. So we're coming 
production stuff going to 2022. They might try to lead us in to that whole scheme and make sevens the thing. I mean, Luke, you just bought the hair sevens. I did just buy the hair sevens. I'm kind of just spitballing, to be honest. I'm just trying to see here. I really put all my stake into that trail running, well, and I yeah, you look ran me now. out of the podcast. You, you just skipped 2021, though. Like, yeah. You know I mean? We're not, dude. Come on. We don't really get a 2021. That's a, that's a rebuild year. This is the Celtics <laughs> 08 right now, and then next year is Celtics 09, where we have to rebuild. Okay. What do you mean Celtics 09? Celtics 09 was great, too. Celtics 08 won the championship. That's what I'm Celtics saying. A- it's a bad oh, – wait, hold on. All right. Uh, so, the, what? The two, the two, the that, wasn't a, that was a horrible – You were still a playoff contender. Dude, I, did, I just equivalent the rioting to the Celtics winning it, in 2008. What's wrong with you? <laughs> the Celtics went to – they won a championship in 2008. They, they possibly would have won the next year if Kevin Garnett didn't get hurt, and they went to the finals in 2010. What are all right, you all right, about? all right. New, new analogy. What are you talking about? It, I back to my point being, I don't know if 2021 is really going to be like a year that we fully get. This okay. year's kind of shot. Kind of. Like this year is. This year's shot year is shot. Fucking, boom, this is out of here. So Bro. 2021, I think we're going to be building the pieces. That's why I'm like 2022. That's going to be my year. That's going to be our year. That's going to be everyone else's year. 2022 is the shit. Yep. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Trail running. Trail <laughs> trail running might not be the answer. I mean, look look at we I mean, we obviously things go in phases, you know. I mean, we had you know, there was the phone posit error, you know, that was what five, five year run mm-hmm. of, yeah. you know, shit just selling out immediately everywhere. Now, you know, they sit on the shelves. I mean, we had the the Air Jordan one run where every Jordan one sold out like immediately. Now you can still find some of them on the shelves. Uh, we're na- now we're just kind of in the dunk. I mean, and, and if we, we've talked about, I don't know if we talked about this last episode, but Nike is literally uh, throwing dunk after dunk out in 2021. Like they're mm-hmm. still going to ride this, this dunk yeah. wave because if they, you know, as you can, as you see, even though it is, um, even though, uh, people are kind of like, when will this end? They've seen what the Brazils, you know, people going crazy for Brazils. They were they're releasing the St. John's uh, in um, a, a, a couple weeks. So dunks are still going to be the thing in 2021. I mean, this is basically what what are we going to, what are we at? Like a two year stretch now? I mean, that'll be two years of dunks just yeah. doing numbers. I mean, if you look at the Air Jordan ones, I mean, we started out in around 20. 13 of them like coming out with you know breads royals black toes like and then that shit went to around 2017 ish 2018 you know Mm -hmm. where everything was just so they had a good five-year run i mean dunks are still going to be going strong next year i mean maybe it's maybe it's back to basics maybe they like hit some blazers you know what i mean for staying nike pacific like maybe like well they just say what they just put out the kevin bradley blazers this past yep. weekend as well mm-hmm. which i could not get a pair of either so frustrating. i mean if you think about it blazers just as a general model like maybe they'll try to fall back in between like uh casual and skate right because ones uh dunks and sbs uh to the casual eye are all the same shoe mm-hmm. right and generally regarded as a maybe not basic but a staple amongst silhouettes that nike has yeah. So if they try to play off that, like, all right, people seem to like us playing basic stuff like Blazers. Cortez has gotten some love over some years, but I mean, you know, yeah, maybe the last gonna just, good uh, one was like the Ken- Kendrick Lamar ones. The Kendrick ones, right? Yeah, those are the um, last good ones. So I mean, maybe they'll go that direction. Who knows? I mean, it makes sense that they would try to stick with the basics route since it's all doing so great. Yeah, yeah, we might be we might be stuck with dunks for a couple more years. We might see the degeneration of dunks. Maybe Lawrence, you were about to say something, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, not to not to go back to uh, the uh, the looting, but uh, you know, <laughs> maybe uh, no. There was something I really wanted to say, and I didn't really say it, and I and I kind of, um, you know, I felt yeah, like I, I needed. I feel like um, because this we're um, we put so much pressure on 
materialistic things, you know. I mean, fuck, we have a podcast dedicated to sneakers and streetwear. Like, you know, it's a we're a materialistic society. So when you see people looting um, and stealing, whether it's running out with Louis Vuitton, three Louis Vuitton bags, these are things that people are conditioned to equate to some type of success. Right. You know status, what I'm saying? Yep. Status, yep. you know? So when I, you know, I, I, you know, I feel like, I feel like when you, you think about all these stores, you know, when you think about round two, when you think about all these other stores that, uh, you know, that are uh, RSVP stores that, you know, put out these, that, that make some people feel inadequate, you know, mm-hmm. like if you can't get, if you can't get a pair of Travis Scott 270s, you know, you're, I saw that they, they just, you're just going to take it. Like now it's like, fuck it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's, that's going to be very interesting to see going forward because, you know, are, are we, we're just going to continue to be a materialistic society. I just, mm-hmm. how I just feel in my heart. And it's like, this is what happens. You know, it's like, uh, it's like you, you can't, you can't as, as a company have a shoe release that people want so bad. And whether it's like chunky donkeys or whatever it is, you can't, and, and then make it so limited that no one can really get a hold of it. I know that's always been the, the game, the yeah. sneaker game, but it's like, this is the problem. Like, where you, you don't make, I'm not saying you make a billion pairs, but I'm saying at the same time, like, you made these so limited that that they're priced up uh, like so much, you know, this is what Nike wants though. This is like, they don't like, I mean the, maybe the 5,000 pairs that they've released, like it's the drop, it's a drop in the bucket because all it is, is it just makes uh, more skate shops want to be part of team Nike. Right. Because if a skate shop is, you know, if they're doing decent numbers, if they add Nike to the fold and they get these limited shoes now, they may go from 5,000 followers to 30,000 followers. And then, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, it's just, it's very, uh, you know, it's a lot, man. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Going back to the, just to stay on the looting thing too, but that it's interesting because you bring up the limited release and all that other shit. I mean, I busted, I busted the kids' balls who were stealing 350s and shit. But if you notice, every one of those kids that you see a video of with some boxes – there's a couple 350s in there, and I do want to just remind everybody that Kanye kind of said, like, I want everyone to have these. Yeah. He made it. He made it and kept it hype enough. He made enough where all these places that we're talking about that got looted, at least these, you know, secondary retail stores, all had enough where everyone that went in, regardless That's right. of if they knew shit or That's not. That's right, Kanye. You did it. You, you did, did it, it dude. It, it, everyone looted your shit. Everybody got a pair of your shoes when they stole. They they got them. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's. I mean, Lawrence, you bring it up a great point. The, the limited shit is kind of a problem because it, it is. It's a huge problem. Why everybody like, has three fifties, but they're still getting stolen. Right, but why is there like the reverse skunks are a great example. The like the country that you come from is fucking in so much pain right now. They are stuck in a fucking they're stuck in a bubble. They can't go anywhere. And so your solution is to just print up five thousand pairs of four hundred and twenty pairs of an exclusive shoe for fucking weed day when everybody just needs a fucking win, you know? Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Like, don't make it four hundred and twenty pairs. Like that shit like that is just it's just purposefully just trying to drive up hype. You know? Yeah, I yeah, I I don't know if they'll ever stop, but Kanye is the best example of a some kind of solution. But out of I'm all seeing, of this. but that's what I'm saying. I think that yeah. with the with the dunks too. I think that's almost a uh, a step in the direct the right direction. Not the SB dunks, but the dunk colorways the that are coming dunks, out next yeah. year. Yeah, but then even 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 so, it's like oh, we got all these colorways coming out, but it's like how many of them are you actually gonna get? Exactly. You know what I mean? Well, You're still true. not gonna get any because well, how, it's like, how, yeah. You're just not going to, to no matter, you can drop a million colorways, but it's like, if you still make them limited, and, and, and here's the thing, it's like Nike's consumer base is growing. 
mm-hmm. every day. Like there's yep. a there's more people that want what Nike has to offer, but yeah. they're still yeah. making the same amount of shoes. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, yeah, dope. You know, you, you you just you just cultivated a new fan base. You just cultivated a new consumer, but at the same time, you ain't making an extra shoe. So now more people are battling for the same, you know, shoe. And then we have, and then, you know, and also I've said this before, I said, you know, these last few months, um, especially with everyone being home, stores not being physically open, you know, it's caused a, 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 an effect that, you know, people are home bored, got a Donald dollars in their bank account. And it's like, Oh, I'm going to buy yeah. Everything. Yeah. So wait, saw, me, hmm? wait, no, wait, wait, what do you got? No, I was gonna say, what were we gonna say, Chris? Go ahead. Um, here's a question that I think is uh China got all fucked up very early from all this shit, delayed a bunch of sneaker shit. We know how factories work, generally speaking. They're not like the healthiest places, they're not the best places that you don't want to go to factories, generally speaking. They're horrible, they have no code of conduct, whatever. Okay. So just to wrap this all in, like COVID fucked a bunch of shit up. Now we got people rioting because police can't stop killing black people. Um, we're talking about the limited quantities of shoes. Um, we're talking about the benefit of the world with trying to get this virus healthy or whatever, just to bring it back, loop it all in. What would you guys rather be tackled first? Sustainability in the sneakers when it comes to the treatment of those people in the factories? Or would you rather just have them make more of the sneaker so we can all get it? I, all right. Because there's, there's basically what we're talking about here, right, is the quantity of sneakers and the health of the people who get the sneakers. That's ultimately what we're kind of like, that's the basis of the two discussions. Right? Nah, because it's not because they was Nike was still whoring people out and making limited shit pre COVID, bro. So it's not like you know, it's not like but, COVID changed the way that Nike uh, distributed sneakers or produced sneakers. Like, bro, they still like, but going, it's about change, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The earth is dying, our people are dying, and we all want solutions, right? So Going back to what you're saying, now I know this is, I'm kind of really wedging this in here, but I'm trying to get the, 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 the question to get answered. Would you rather have a limited, clean sneaker with no carbon footprint, or would you rather have everyone get the sneaker that's made to damage the earth? I kind of, uh, that's not the right wording, but you guys get what I'm saying. You're trying to make one side seem a little bit better than the other right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, no, I'm just asking. Because we, uh, we were just talking about how we all agree we want to get some W's, right? Yeah. I would love to get a, I would love to get a sneaker that I want with very minimal effort. Uh, does that mean you guys make more of them? Or do we clean it up? It means you make more of them. <laughs> if, we're, if we're running low on sneakers, you make case more. In, case in point, what you just said, Chris. Yesterday, the uh, Air Jordan 13 Flints came out, right? Mm-hmm. Now, normally, sneaker like that comes out, pretty much a lot of people are going to eat on a, sne- on a shoe like that. Mm-hmm. Did a lot of people eat on those sneakers? That's very debatable. It was a quick sellout, instant sellout. Um, it, people had a tough time getting them on Foot, Lo- on foot Locker, the foot stores, finish line, mm-hmm. you couldn't get in. Sneakers sold out in like three minutes, you know, it are you know so you you know now we're getting to the point where even general releases are becoming harder for the average consumer to get yeah and i think you know now that's that's an issue you know and i and i'm gonna say yo uh fuck gentry because gentry humphrey because i've always i've gone on record as saying that (laughs) he's trying to take it back to where general releases sell out like they used to in 2012 yeah we, we've seen, like, we saw Metallics, you know, selling out Metallics 4s. We're, we're getting to that point where it's about to be, you know, it's going to be like, you're going to go through hoops. Now, granted, things may change when the stores reopen, but you're going to go through hoops to get a pair of sneakers again. Mm-hmm. I want more sneakers, I think. I yeah. also want to just get the sneaker. It sucks, though, 
because this is a perfect opportunity for us to fix a couple things that are going on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's what are you talking more, about? more worth than my selfish need for the sneakers. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. Mm. Um, I was asking this just because I did want to shout out amongst all this crazy shit that's going on. All birds and Adidas are working together to make a shoe that has no carbon footprint. Right. Which, uh, just to clarify for those who don't understand what a carbon footprint actually is, it's the use of fossil fuels to create carbon dioxide that goes into the air. That's the he looked nerd. that up. He looked that I up did. before. I, I did look that up. <laughs> really trying. I don't want to be a part of this misinformation campaign, Luke. All right, there, buddy? I'm just, I'm letting everybody <laughs> know that you're trying. <laughs> I'm trying very hard. I'm trying to produce yeah. this goddamn podcast. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I do want to shout them out because that is the right thing to do. Again, it's another uh, weird collaboration that came from a trying time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's just a, a step in the right direction for the most part. You would think that, all birds and Adidas wouldn't really mesh with each other because all birds basically just sells Yeezys, yeah. but they came together and they're doing that, which I think is cool. So when I was wedging that conversation in there, that was basically just to inform the people and to shout them out of the Adidas and all bird. Uh, yeah. Would collab. I rather have like a, a shelf full of space hippies from, cause Nike's got like a whole collab coming out with it. Like they have like four or five different new pairs of space hippies coming yeah, out. For sure. Uh, that's gonna yeah. be another sneaker that people are gonna. That's be another thing. About. That's like, gonna like, be a, a highly sought after sneaker. It's gonna be worth resell. Like it's gonna be dumb resell money, for what? For like it almost defeats the purpose of even making it if it's like going to five people for five grand. You know? Well, what is what is crazy is those shoes are basically Nike looking at the floor of their factories and going like, can we just make the shoes out of this shit down here? Mm -hmm. And they said yes. And, and they, they said did. yes, and then got the hype machine a part of that. So now they're literally selling us garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is here, but I want everybody to be safe. Yeah, that's that's the main thing, guys. Like, um, if you're if you, I've been told by more than a few just to stay in because they know what side I'm on at least. So they're like, yo, don't be doing shit that gets us in trouble later. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Black people saying that like the shit that I might do outside of this might get blamed on them. So mm -hmm. I'm like, cool, I'll stay inside. You guys been staying inside. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of the, the for the most part the safest move, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, donate money to the funds. Yep, I donated some money um, to the Brooklyn Bail Fund. Mm -hmm. um, what do you call it? Uh, the George's brother has it go fund me you can go mm -hmm. fund that you can you can uh, you can support with your dollar you don't have to support with your body if you're not comfortable yeah you know mm -hmm. yeah so i mean anything else guys i don't know how much time we've really done here but we probably could wrap it up we've yeah, we've done like almost an hour like 50 okay yeah um a lot of this know. news has been uh it's not so much about particular releases, but things that uh, people have been um, releasing from stores themselves. They've kicked the door down and just grab. Right. What's with that? You showed you showed me the uh, the DIY T-shirt kit. What was that before? We oh go? yeah, I thought that was just a cool thing, Lawrence. Did you see that? No, I didn't see. I sent it like right before we recorded, so I didn't stick anyone home. Let me just pull it up on here. Now there was just. Amongst all this fucking garbage dog shit that we're, uh, it's almost making me unravel mentally. I did see this fucking, to me, this is irony done correctly and with mm -hmm. taste. Um, I mentioned, I don't know, what, a couple weeks ago, I tie dyed a bunch of shit out of quarantine boredom to save it from coffee stains. Right. So this shirt by this brand I've never heard of, Reese Cooper. Actually, no, I've, that name sounds familiar. I just maybe I, I'm not so familiar with them specifically. But they made this tie-dye, or not even tie-dye, this do-it-yourself uh, customizing kit where the instructions are on the tee. And it's done in a very tasteful, uh, currently trending um, format. Mm -hmm. The very simple, the clean, just bong, 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 simple writing. And I know, I thought this was, was cool shit. So I guess they give you all the, the stuff that you can make the kit. So, I mean, for the audio listeners, they just got like uh, some Dawn, Morton, and some instruction manuals, some dyes, some teaspoons and shit. And basically, you wash the shirt yourself, and then you dye it um, to have this nice custom color of whatever you want. I think this is cool shit. That's pretty I do cool. I like that, too. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's- it's, 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 uh, very disciplined in, in taste. Uh, it's, it seems very authentic. You have like the actual shit that you're supposed to follow on the shirt. It's not hiding that it's a DIY shirt. I just think this is cool. Very cool. A nice little yeah. pick me up from today's talk. Yeah. And you know, and you know what guys, I'll say this sincerely, like doing things like this has, uh, and for the people at home too, if you guys like can't like get yourself to mentally like be in a happier place because of all the shit you're seeing on social media, doing something like this, I'm not saying buy this shit, but doing something like this where you get like a nice little activity, it definitely gets yeah. your mind off it. Little project. I've been working on Gundams, Gundam model kits. <laughs> oh yeah. You guys in the discord have been talking about that. We've been talking about model kits for a couple of days. It's been fun. It's been a, a good escape from all this craziness. Yeah, guys, so, like dumb activities like this are super helpful in times where you can't, uh, you know, look at what you normally look at your phone. Hey, like, everything is just like a cesspool right now. It's so I, I don't even want to like make jokes. Like I don't even want to tweet things just because like I don't want to seem insensitive. It's just a you really time. shouldn't. <laughs> no, no. I do. The other day I was like for like 10 minutes, I was trying to word this joke on Twitter and I was like and then like. You know, you exit out and you just see videos of people throwing shit at cops and you're like, I, I think I can save this for later. Yeah, I think you can save it for later, yep. yep. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, just do shit like this. This is cool. Reese Cooper, DIY shit, tie-dye some shit. Mm-hmm. Have some fun. Yeah, there like I said, great time to clean your sneakers, organize your whole shit. There you go. Stay do, you guys use, um, do you guys use cleaner on your sneakers? I'm trying to figure out. No, not you- really. Not really? Okay. No, I mean, the best uh, sort of cleaning thing, depending on what material it is, but, like, I'm assuming you're having trouble with, like, suede or a mess, right? Mm-hmm. Just it's one the, the fear yeah, of yeah. gods. It's like a weird suede material. If you can get them, I don't know how you would get them right now, but some OxyClean spray or something comparable. Okay. Um, what you do is you just spray that, give it, like, some just enough so it's, like, damp enough, and then you just lightly dab with a cotton ball or whatever. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. Sounds good. Um, any other final thoughts, guys? Nah, just stay safe, love each other. And that's it, man. Yeah. Join the Discord. I mean, we're having fun in there. It's that's also another good distraction. We just talk shit. Um, yep. you know, follow us on social media. Uh, I mean, if you guys are already listening this far, you probably already do, but if not, at not that cheney, at Trevisus at L Z D three two five. Um, you can leave us a voicemail. If you go to the Instagram, there's a phone number. You can text, leave us a voicemail. You can email us. Uh, come distract yourself with us, guys. Yeah. Or that's it. Um, 115. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Later, guys. Peace.